couple problems here right away. The car thing. So Simon Dan, but let's start with the other Dan, our other favorite Dan. Um, there's a couple from him, but Matt, we have a groundbreaking argument here. Okay. Absolutely earth shattering creation, destroying groundbreaking, irrefutable argument. Wow. From good old Dr. Dan. Okay. Are you ready for this? This, this should be good. Yeah. It's a tough one. It's from what I've seen because I've, I've thought a lot about what he says here it's essentially irrefutable like i'm pretty sure dan has indeed forced us into early retirement and so we might as well now become evolutionists throw we, in the towel <laughs> we may as well believe that we're related to banana plants and strawberries because that's what the science says because of a very significant point that we are going to hear now. So I'm going to go on mute if there's ever any issues with sound because I'll be largely, oh, there we go up there. Creation myths. We're going to be uh, refuting creation myths tonight with creation facts. Okay, here we go. Make sure the sound's on. This one is fine, right? So right away, we get human engineers designed with homologous patterns, right? You reuse things, whatever, right? He goes right to the car analogy, which we've all seen a million times. Now, couple problems here right away. The car thing is uh, cars don't reproduce. <laughs> right? So it's not an analogy of biological systems. <laughs> explain the patterns of similarity in the context He's of so things serious, that reproduce. He's so serious, too, right? <laughs> yeah. Show. Like, we didn't know that. I'm an ancestor. We didn't know. No, I, I didn't. Family. I mean, speak for kind yourself. Ancestry I, within, I thought um, cars came about I, when I say due to reproduction and, and the passing on of genes. And so... Right here, you learned with cars. Actually, did you ever see cars reproducing? <laughs> we, I never did uh, personally, but I, I thought that that I mean, we have all these cars in these car lots. Like, how did they come about? Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> Dan's blown my mind. And, anyways, you know, a PhD evolutionary biologist, like this, is the best they got. Right? Not engaging the model, essentially straw manning the model, not understanding what we're saying. And so, I wrote an article, several articles that Dan has been in, incapable of refuting. And so this is the article I wrote, a clarification on 14 evidences. So backstory, mm -hmm. I put out a, a lay person go-to resource article debunking uh, 14 of the best so-called lines of evidence for evolution. Mm -hmm. ah, you and I, we've been doing this for six years or so. We've also hosted so many debates. I mean, I've hosted over 450 Many of those on evolution. I've done a hundred of my own formal debates, hundreds informal debates with all the open mics. And as we've seen what the critics say. And so I just put out a nice kind of fact sheet, cheat sheet, go-to resource for people uh, to enjoy and utilize. And then Dan responded to that. And so I responded to his response. And number three, this is what I said to his groundbreaking creation dismantling uh, po point. Cars don't reproduce. Uh, apparently, it takes you know ten years of school and a PhD to to figure that out. But here's what I say, and then Matt will get your thoughts. This is my favorite part of his video. This showcases just how weak the evolutionary position really is. At seven forty, and again at eleven eighteen. Yeah, he it, it's such a profound argument. He does he does use it again, understandably so. I mean, it's that good, so he might as well repeat it a couple times. <laughs> Doctor Dan scoffs at my use of the car analogy. He goes right to the car analogy. This is what Dan said, uh, which we've seen all a million times. Cars don't reproduce. It's not an analogy for biological systems. There's there's something I could say there, but I'll, I'll refrain. Uh, <laughs> we've uh, jumped behind the scenes, eh, eh, uh, Matt. This demonstrates rhetoric, not argument. Analogies are meant to illustrate reasoning patterns, not be literal equivalents. The car example shows that shared design features don't require common ancestry. Engineers across continents independently produce vehicles with headlights, wheels, and windshields because those features are optimal design solutions. Similarly, homologous structures in biology can reflect common design. And ironically, if cars did reproduce, manufacturers would rejoice. Here's something I want to expand on. 
because self-replication is a design feature vastly superior to human engineering. Far from weakening the analogy, this is why I say responses from people like Dan and the more informed critics, they're actually gifts, early Christmas presents to us biblical creationists, because it shows how weak the overall position is. Because if the apostles a fish to fisherman evolution like Dan, okay, the go-to guys on this topic, if this is the best they have to offer, then all of your other guardians of common descent, all of your other apologists of evolution, it's only going to get worse from there, right? Because they largely just kind of repeat the arguments that they're hearing from some of the more informed evolutionists. But it also gives us the opportunity to showcase even further how overwhelming the evidence is for biblical creation. And so far from weakening the analogy, the reproductive capacity of life strengthens the case for design. The creator built systems beyond anything humans can achieve. In a nutshell, what does our model suggest? The Bible says God creates man in his image. Therefore, there must be something about us that reflects the divine. And so perhaps we can get an idea, not a perfect understanding, because we're dealing with God who's infinite. If I could fit the three, uh, the infinite God in my three pound brain, he wouldn't be a God worth worshiping as Kent has said before brilliantly. And so we can get an idea for how God may have designed and ordered things based on the way we design and order things. It just turns out we design in homologous patterns. We design in nested hierarchical patterns, but we're limited. God actually went above and beyond what we could do. And he designed the biological order to reproduce and pass on their genes and adapt. Could you imagine if car manufacturers were able to design a vehicle, Matt, that could self-replicate? They design one, a foundational model, an archetype, click a button, and then that just self-replicates. They're gonna save a ton of money for not having to have all these workers working on the line, okay? They're going to make billions of dollars. This is going to be revolutionary, but we're limited. We're catching up to God, but God's still so far above and beyond. Okay. But it's not a coincidence that we as human engineers are designing things that are reflective, that are analogous to what we find in the biological world. And these are the points that Dan simply does not engage. These are the deeper points that a critic like Dan is so unwilling to interact with. Anyways, Matt, what are your thoughts, brother? Uh, creation's false, you can't use analogies, you can't compare the biological world to modes of transportation because cars don't reproduce. What are your thoughts, brother? Oh man, well, you know, the analogies are made for the general public because they need analogy sometimes. Dan having a PhD might not need an analogy because he's studied it. He's paid thousands of dollars and he's got years under his belt to understand and break it down. So somebody like him might not like it, but guess what? These analogies have existed for a very long time. And look at this, this is from 1990. It's an evolutionist who used the car analogy. And it's this, this is 35 years ago. And look, he said, this evidence is so solid and comprehensive that it cannot be denied by any reasonable person. What's he talking about? He's talking about um, the homology, about how these structures uh, show a pattern. Now, the question would be, when you look at that, do you see a pattern? Somebody else did as well. And this is very early on because the original pattern for homology was created by a creationist, by Sir Patrick Owen. That's right. So homology is actually evidence for creation. It was Darwin who later came along and said similarity due to common design, and he changed it to similarity due to common ancestry. He was very good at plagiarizing people. But what happened is Owen had this concept of an archetype, and from that flowed all of the other organisms. And he also used analogies. The archetype was an analogy. <laughs> How ironic is that? That the very person that invented homology used an analogy to help a layman understand what he's talking about. Analogies are great. We know that cars don't reproduce. If, if, if we thought that they did, maybe we would add a new gender to the ever-growing list. But I don't think they do reproduce. I've never seen it, but I do sleep at night. So perhaps they're nocturnal breeders. I don't know. I'll have to set my camera up later. 
<laughs> and so what uh, uh, Owen did is he said sea creatures and birds were created first. So therefore, we should find a homology pattern going through and then find it in land animals later, culminating in the epitome, the pinnacle of creation, which would be humans. And this would be the most uh, optimal design that there is, which is ironic because now look at the world. Humans live in every niche that there is. We've dominated every other life form on Earth. Clearly, we're the, the best design, I'm, I'm saying, that there is. So I think that this is a, not using an analogy is a disservice to people that are new and getting into this and maybe not even like science too much. Analogies are very important. And that's why we will continue to use them. And if we can improve on them, we will. I've heard Kent say, have you ever taken a CD and you make a copy of that CD? And then you take that new CD and you make a copy of that. And then you keep doing that. You ever notice that each copy gets a little bit worse and worse? And then, you know, a hundred copies later, it doesn't sound even remotely as good as the original did. That's a very good analogy for showing the breakdown of the human genome over time. We accumulate mutations just like that CD would accumulate damage over time and never be as clear as the original. So those analogies are designed to help us understand things. And I think they were good. We might not use cars later. Why? Because there's plenty of other analogies like you're working on right now with Pokemon.